I saw a video of you speaking in uh, Poughkeepsie, New York, a yep. few nights ago. And you said something that was very striking to me. We don't hear from a lot of libertarians on the show very often, uh, but I found that you as a third party libertarian, um, you talk about the Republican Party much in the way that a lot of us sort of disaffected lefties talk about mm -hmm. the Democratic Party. You sounded almost yeah. exactly the way we sound, except you're talking about the GOP. What you said was that the Republicans have almost no chance of winning statewide races here in New York, but they're not interested in winning. They would rather lose than disrupt their grift. And that's exactly, almost word for word, how we describe Democrat hacks here on our side of things. So do you want to just sort of flesh out that point a little bit? How are the Republicans 100%. grifting in the same way that the Democrats are? In New York State, and I think many states are this way, running the Board of Elections is actually not officially Democrat Republicans. It is, quote, the top two parties. So that's all they're doing. And then they make sure that no other parties can get anywhere near the top and they run it. And these are all jobs, these are all government jobs. So they all wanna make sure they're all having government jobs with government grift. As long as they're controlling everything, they have all those government jobs with government grift. That's why they want it. But something else, they keep raising money because they keep lying to Republicans in the state. And they, every year they tell them, this is the year. I'm sorry, if you are Republican in New York State, it's never going to be the year ever again. The Republicans have not won any statewide elections in this state, nothing, not governor, not senator, not AG, nothing, in 22 years. And the state is getting bluer, not redder. There are 6.5 million registered Democrats in this state, 3 point something, I think 3.7, non-affiliated, and only like 2.5 million Republicans, and the number's going down. 300,000 New Yorkers leave this state every single year. In one month, 6,000 New Yorkers change their driver's license from New York to Florida. In one month, 200 a day. Most of those are Republicans. The state's getting bluer. Those days are long gone, never gonna happen again. And they know it. I'm not the only guy who knows this, but they still every year go, yeah, we wanna actually make this work. We can do it this time. And millions of New Yorkers, Republicans with hope, give money to the Republican party. And here's what actually happened. Lee Zeldin, and I don't care if he gets mad hearing this. Lee Zeldin was afraid he was going to lose his seat in the redistricting in Long Island because he's a bad. He was a bad congressman. Never showed up. They didn't like him there. He's worried. So he thinks, "What can I do? I'm going to lose my seat. What can I do?" Now Nick Langworthy, who runs the Republican Party here in New York, goes, "Hey, I got an idea. If you'll help me grift, you can run for governor." Well, lie to Republicans here and tell them that they can actually win. They'll give us millions of dollars, and then you can take that money, open up a pack, and be rich for the next you know ten years. And Lee said, that's a great idea. And Nick said, I'll lie, get a bunch of money saying that I can beat beat, beat Hochul in this state. They'll give me money. Then I'll run for Congress and then I'll be of the grift. And that is literally what happened. They raised $13 million knowing they were never going to win. I predicted exactly how much they would lose by. I actually said it. On, I had the receipts. I told him how much he'd lose by. He lost by that. Then afterwards, I said, three months later, Lee Zeldin will be part of a pack grifting. And what is he now? part of a pack grifting, and Langworthy stabbed Carl Paladino in the back, ran against him in Congress, and then became a congressman. So both of them grifted perfectly. Not just that, Joe Pinion, the guy who was also running, who was looking to be the senator, that guy's got a gig now on CNN. All the top guys grifted, the Republicans got suckered, lost all their money, and then the state still sucks. Nothing changed. And the <laughs> argument they say, well, Larry, you can't win. Well, you know what? He came in second again for the past 22 years. Nothing changed. What if I would have come in second? Imagine what I would have done if I would have come in second. You want change? Vote third party. Now, obviously, I'm biased. I would like to be libertarian. However, the forward party last year endorsed me. Yeah, that was, was the, the question only, I had for you. I was going to talk to you about that. So go ahead. I was the only libertarian yeah, go ahead. that the forward party endorsed. I was yep. the only one they did the entire, across the entire country because I want third parties to win. Third parties are the only way we fix this state and we fix this country. Otherwise, we just get deeper and deeper into this horrible fight. And it's just a grift. I'm obviously biased. I'm, I wear my libertarianism on my sleeve. But I would take forward, too. I want a, 30, I want a third party. Yeah, so like their main criteria when they were choosing who to endorse in that slate of candidates who they picked, the thing they were looking for most was commitment to electoral reform, right? 100%. Opening up the system to different third parties, ranked choice voting, this and that. So do you want to speak about your stances on those issues? 
Absolutely. I call it the program. I hope that sounds cool. B R O program. It's not B, bad. It's not bad. Easier ballot I've access. Heard worse. Right. Yes, there we go. You've heard worse. Yeah. <laughs> ballot access right now in certain states is impossible. New York State, literally impossible. You have to get 45,000 signatures in six weeks during a time when there's still snowstorms in New York. It is impossible. How do I know it's impossible? Three people tried it last year and couldn't do it. Me, someone who's done it before and has a party behind me. Lee Zeldin, the sitting Republican senator and the guy who ran, tried to get a third party line. He couldn't do it. And Harry Wilson, who was a multimillionaire, he couldn't do it. It is literally impossible. And I sued them before saying, this is impossible. They said, no, it isn't. Then I sued them yeah. after saying, look, I said it was impossible. It's impossible. And they still said no, even though last year was the first year in 80 years where there was no independent candidate on the running for governor in New York State. And I am 100% for more easier ballot access. For the most important reason, there is no harm to me being on the ballot. I was in the ballot in 2018. Millions of people chose to not vote for me, sadly. But because you can not vote for me, you can just go, Larry Sharp, I don't like that guy. And they will just not vote for me. Totally fine. But when I'm not on the ballot, there is harm. And the argument I put towards the court was a very simple one. Every single two years, every cycle in New York State, about half a million New Yorkers vote third party. Do they think that person's going to win? Of course not. They don't believe that, but they still do it. So why would half a million New Yorkers vote third party knowing they're not going to win? It is literally a protest vote against the system. It is your First Amendment right. It is free speech. And the court is literally disenfranchising Americans, New Yorkers. And they went, I don't care. I'm part of the system. You know, it's my system too. No. So that's why I want ballot access. But the second piece I want is the R, and that's ranked choice voting. Ranked choice voting is so important because ranked choice voting takes away the... I'm scared of the other guy winning. It allows you to both vote offensively and defensively. So let's say you think that you like me. You think Larry's a good guy. You'd love to vote for him because you like me because I'm good looking. And I am good looking. So that's a valid reason to vote for me. So you decide because I'm good looking and to vote for me. I love it. But you're afraid that maybe the Republican might win. So now you vote for me first and the Democrats second. Offensive, defensive vote. If I win, you got a good looking governor. Life is good. If I lose, you, your vote goes to the person who you're worried about anyway, and you get your second class, your at least vote. At least it's not that guy. You and in your case, vote. it would be Lee Zeldin, who's not good looking at all. So unfortunately, not there'd be a major, major drop off there. Exactly. 100%. Russell said Lee Zeldin looks like the flustered manager at a McDonald's when the milkshake machine's not working right. That's how Lee, yes. Lee Zeldin looks. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I thought that was oh, yeah. very good. Yes. That and was you, very can, you, you can pass that on to him. <laughs> yeah, you can um, pass that on to him. Yeah. And well, then the, the last part is open primaries. Now, there's a, there is an argument to not have open primaries, which is you're kind of hurting the party system and the value of parties. And I, and I get that part. I do. However, the way everything is gerrymandered now People don't have any rights in votes, right? Where I live in New York, right, my area, the Republicans haven't run a candidate in 10 years. They haven't run a candidate where I, where I am. So you only get the Democrat. No, where are you at? Prime. Yes, I'm in Queens. AOC uh, is my congressperson. Uh, okay. Do you know where All I live? Right. Where are you, Astoria? So, yes, I'm in Astoria, yep. Yeah. So, so where I live, they don't even bother running candidates anymore. So if you're not registered Democrat, you have no say in your government. It's not fair. Because of dairy, gerrymandering, you have to have open primaries so anyone can talk and have a real representation and actually have a democracy. Otherwise, we don't have one. Well, the, it, it does this partly in New York State specifically. Um, it's always been this machine politics state. It goes back to Tammany Hall. Uh, that's why it's particularly impossible to get any kind of third party. You can't even get momentum in the Democratic primaries. You have to be registered as a Democrat. I think it's 90 days, at least 90 days before the primary to make sure that nobody registers to vote for an insurgent <laughs> candidate. Yes, yes. They, they, it, they go out of their way to stop. They, they make everything hard. And they also, the sad part is they go out of their way to, if they find anything that's wrong, they err on the side of throwing you off versus erring on the side of keeping right. you on. Right. right. They err on the side of your vote not counting versus your vote counting. That's the biggest problem. Yeah. So as a libertarian, as a third party candidate running for governor twice, um, 
what was it like trying to build momentum, trying to organize events, trying to get media? Because this is the reservation that a lot of people have, because Russell and I are both, as we brand ourselves now, uh, post-duopoly, right? Like, yep. there's a lot going on in the Democratic Party now. There's a big divide where, you know, people want to run insurgent, you know, mm-hmm. anti-establishment candidates against the party bosses. And we have kind of said, no, let's step back from that. Let's commit to outside organizing, which includes mutual aid efforts and, you know, yep. direct actions, but also to the extent that you do want to engage in the sort of uh, e- e- um, electoral system at all, do it through these third party routes. What were the biggest obstacles in your mind to organizing and sort of building momentum? And where did you find opportunities for success? Yeah, biggest I could I could talk about this literally for hours, but I will not kill your your, your show. You'll have no one watching if I do that. So I'll be good. I won't go hours. I'll hit the biggest one. Money money and money. That was the biggest issue, no matter what the entire system is pay to play. That's the problem. The whole system pay to play. So in 2018, when I had a really good, I had a really good campaign in 2018, my 2022 campaign was a disaster because I had to spend $400,000 just trying to get in the ballot and getting sued. Didn't work. 2018, I raised half a million dollars and that was nowhere near enough. Nowhere near Mm -hmm. enough. Why? I couldn't get into polling. And you might say, why not? Well, I was on the ballot and I was raising money. So we called the polling company and said, well, why aren't you on the polls? Why, why aren't you in the polls? They went, well, you don't buy the poll. I, I said, what? You hmm. got to buy the poll. Oh, so if I buy the poll, then I'm in a the poll? They went, yeah. How much does the poll cost? I see. I never knew four, that. $40,000 for the big boys. Wow. Forty grand. Wow. 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 Now, what wow. if I That's want amazing. multiple polls? I never heard that. That's crazy. Yes, nobody knows this. That's yeah, nobody my point. Knows this. Even guys like us who eat, you know, eat, live, and breathe this stuff. I've never heard that. So you, you yes. so these parties buy themselves into these polls. Correct, but they often use PACs. So well, sure, but is, either way, they, they, they get paid. Right. They get 100%. paid. So then who do you think writes the questions when they buy the poll? Right. The PAC does. So now you guys love me so much. You want me to be governor in 2026. So you start a PAC and you raise two million dollars because you love me. Then you go buy a poll. You call the PAC. The Fairness in New York Act Pact. You call it something cool like that. And then it says, this is a poll sponsored by the Fairness of New York Group. Oh, wow, it must be fair because it's in the name. And then you make a poll that's blatantly biased towards me because you love me. And I all of a sudden poll at 37%. How cool is that? That's how the game's actually played. I didn't know that until I ran. So pay to play. But I'm still not done. I, I wondered, I said, why am I not being covered? Like, why are people not covered? Why am I not in the news? Why am I not there? And I said, and we asked them why. And they said, oh, well, you don't buy ads. I got to say, what? Yeah, you got to buy ads. Buy ads will cover you. Just buy ads. Oh, wow. That's yeah. it. So my biggest problem That's was thing I never question thought. cash. If you mm-hmm. buy ads, you get into paper. If you buy polls, you get into polls. If you get into polls and you get into the mainstream, you become mainstream. So cash is the biggest. There are many issues. I can go on forever, but you asked for the biggest one. Cash. You have to be able to raise lots of cash. And the problem is most people don't want to give if they think you have no chance of winning. So it's Mm -hmm. a, it's a double edged sword. You can't win. So they won't give you money. You can't, they won't give you money. So you can't win. So it's a very challenging piece. So raising money is the most important thing. If we can raise that money, you can become legitimate because, and, and the parties knew that they knew I learned that in 2018. So they didn't bother trying that. By the way, I was in polls in 2021 because I knew some people who could buy me some polls. So I had some polls. I knew the game. I learned in 2018. I was polling at 6% before I ran. The Republicans saw this, and this goes to your point. I actually was very open. When I was polling at 6%, I thought, okay, this is amazing. I hadn't even announced yet, right? So, but I've been crossing the state for five years. People knew who I was, right? So I was able to, to have a decent poll. So I go out there and I say, okay, hey, independent parties, conservative party, Republican party, forward party, why don't you get behind me? We'll create a coalition against the establishment, cap, uh, uh, Governor Kathy Hochul, and we'll win this thing. And other parties were like, yeah, that's a great idea. I went to Republicans. I said, I'll do that. Republicans went, nope, nope. You got to become a Republican. I said, then I lose. That 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 ends it. Now, I can lose on my own. I've done it already. I know how to do that. I got, <laughs> I got the losing part down. I don't need your help for that. I need your help to win. And they were like, well, no, no, no. Then you can't. I said, okay, tell you what. Do me like Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders is literally an independent, but he runs the Democratic Party. Let me run as a, as a libertarian in your in your primary. And if I win the primary, 
everybody's happy, right? They went, they went, wow, you could win a primary. I said, I will win your primary. I'll win your primary. I'll have four lines. Because in New York State, for those of you who don't know, you can run on multiple lines at the same time. Very mm -hmm. rare. So yeah. I can have four or five lines, all good, have a chance at winning. And they went, you're right. Oh, my God. We're going to sue you off the ballot. That was their answer. Their answer was, we're going to sue you off the ballot. It wasn't, oh, my God, we could win. So I literally gave the Republican Party in New York State a chance to win. And they said, wait a minute, that might screw up our grift. So we're going to sue you off the ballot instead. So I, so for my attempt to try to win this thing and to change New York State, my reward was a lawsuit, which cost me about $100,000, and I still lost. Well, I, th I, I this is one of the things that's fascinating to me. I think, you know, a lot of Democrats think they're um, – that corruption is, you know, they're brainwashed. Co corruption is a conservative phenomena. New York's a blue state, so it's not corrupt. Very few of them know that it always ranks towards the top of the most corrupt states yep. in America. And that Absolutely. is partly because it's generally been this one party state, really, right. for most for most of its history. With, with brief yes. interludes, it's been run by Democrats for over 100 years. Agreed. But... The last 22 years, utterly dominated by Democrats. I mean, just now super majorities, just utterly run. And to my point, how do I, people would say, well, Larry, even if you won, so what? You can't do anything. That's not true. If I had actually won, obviously a fantasy world, but if I had actually won, that would mean I'd have a mandate, number one. So that means people would see that. But number two, our Senate in New York State is almost split, almost 50-50. All I have to have is five people in the Senate flip libertarian and I run the Senate with a swing vote. People don't realize that. When you're third party, you just need enough to have a swing vote. In our American U.S. Senate, two libertarians, three at max, we run the Senate with a swing vote. So you can actually make impact as a third party not having 51%, just having enough to do a swing vote. Please clap.